pre, pre-K we've now concluded. We weren't there before, but we're there now. Uh, because those kids who, can't, who aren't prepared when they get to the f- kindergarten are frankly going to be the th- ones who probably don't finish high school. And that's a huge talent issue, but more important, it's a tremendous social issue for us. We can't have people who can't, who, who can't hold a job and can't uh, you know, f- uh, feed themselves and take care of their families. Uh, the Labor Department, I don't think this, this figure was used, the Labor Department that's in our uh, commission report uh, said that if, as they look forward, somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the fastest growing jobs in this country will require not just a high school degree, but some college. You know, it doesn't mean you need a PhD from Stanford, uh, but it does mean you need to be able to have a good understanding of, of, um, of math, of quantitative skills, obviously reading, uh, uh, technology, um, and um, for almost any job out there. Uh, you want to be a technician at your local uh, Chevy dealer or Toyota dealer, you've got to be able to how to work the computer, you've got to how to, how to solve problems, you've got to know how to, how to deal with people and, and deal with people in a group. So the, the days of going back to the auto technician used to be called a mechanic. He used to know how to change the oil and uh, you know, pump the gas. Those days are long gone. Uh, we found before this terrible recession that we're in huge shortages out there. Even through this recession, there are shortages in certain skills. I'll give you an example I hear about all the time. One of our, we have 900 trade associations as part of the chamber. One of them is the Nuclear Energy Institute. They cannot find the technicians to deal with nuclear power plants. Not the people to design the plants. That's another problem for Westinghouse and others. But what happens when the plan isn't working right? And who's there to be sure to deal with the problems? In fact, they sent a delegation to Detroit uh, to try and get some of the laid off auto workers to move around the country. It frankly wasn't terribly successful. People don't like to move. Uh, if they can't sell their houses, they don't want to move. But there's an area. I, when I go around and talk to chambers, someone will always raise their hand and say, why can't we get more welders? You think, gee, that would be easy. Welders can't find them. And of course, at the high end of the scale, you know, the engineers for Microsoft and Intel and Cisco, that's an enormous problem because what we're doing is we don't have enough homegrown talent. Roughly, and I don't know, it may vary in your state at your flagship institutions, but at our PhD granting institutions in engineering and physics and math, 50% or more are foreign nationals. So those degrees, and in fact, they have trouble getting in, and then we're not terribly far-sighted about it. We then say after, uh, you know, Stanford or Chicago or Berkeley educates them, we say, oh, no, you can't stay here. You don't have the right visa. So we pay for it. The government's paying for it through NSF, through whatever the source is, and then we say you can't stay. We've got to we change our immigration laws to keep those uh, talented people here because while the pipeline gets filled with really qualified STEM graduates at these higher levels, we can have someone do the work. Uh, the story I like to tell Craig Barrett, who's the retired CEO of Intel, uh, has in, is investing roughly one billion dollars, one B with a billion, not a trillion, a billion dollars in to create an R&D facility in Israel. Now, he's not going to Israel. Intel didn't go to Israel because it's cheaper than the United States or safer than the United States. It's because the talent is there. And that's part of the issue. We have got to home grow our talent or let some talent in from around the world. And that's going on. These companies will put R&D plants here in the United States, whether it's Intel or Microsoft or Cisco or any of the Texas instruments, but they've got to have the talent. And the federal government has to have the talent. Uh, NASA, half of NASA's engineers are going to be retiring in the next 10 years. Uh, The same is true across the board. The most highly educated part of our workforce um, are those who are in the sort of baby boomer generation. And when they start retiring, and that's probably delayed in many cases because of what's happened to the markets, but as they start retiring, you're going to find uh, more and more um, 
jobs going unfilled. And it's a tremendous challenge uh, to industry, uh, to the oil field industry. I mean, you, you know, to go out and work in an oil field, some of you are from, you know, Texas, Louisiana, et cetera, you know that it, they're, the oil industry is going to lose people. And how are they going to get other people? It's, it's, these are technical jobs that require, uh, that require skills. Uh, you heard about the, uh, the issues of, uh, of remediation. That's a tremendous uh, problem. And we hear it from our members. They're spending uh, untold billions, and this is not just high school graduates, it's college graduates as well, untold billions training people in basic skills that should have been learned in high school and college. Sure, they're willing to, you know, they're happy, Harley Davidson's happy to train people um, in what they're, uh, um, uh, in what, what it takes to, to put together a good motorcycle, but they don't want to teach them the basic skills. Uh, let, me, let me close by uh, talking about what I think the role of business is and role what you legislators can do. Uh, I think you need to focus, as I say, about alignment and on reform of K through 12. 48 states have said they want to adopt common standards in English and math. They're working together through the National Governors Association and the chief state school officers. We think that's a good effort. It ought to not be mandated by the federal government. The Department of Education shouldn't develop those standards. But I think it's a, we think we've come to the conclusion that, you know, geometry is not different in Vermont from Colorado. It's all the same. And you shouldn't have different states doing different things. And we know that No Child Left Behind, with all of its virtues, and I'll defend those, I think they're very considerable, has involved a lot of states dumbing down their standards. I think the states, and you all are at the, at the center of this, need to be working to develop common standards. And uh, there may be some tweaks from regionally, but I think that's important. Second, you need to focus on STEM. Uh, education, uh, the technology stuff, that's what's going to bring business into your state. If you don't have it, businesses are going to go elsewhere. Um, and I think at the end, you also ought to focus on the quality of what's happening on the outcomes at your state institutions. Um, you need to ask questions. What if, if you've got an engineering school, what's happening to the graduates? Are they passing the exam? If you've got a pharmacy school, what's happening to the, are they passing the exam? Are the graduates of these institutions getting jobs? Find out, ask questions when these, you know, when the heads of these institutions come before you, what are the outcomes? Because you're the ones with the power of the purse, and I think you're the ones who can demand uh, results. And uh, with that, I'll stop and uh, go back to Anne for uh, getting a dialogue going.